All right, here we go with lesson two. Um, so lesson one, we did numbers only, and today we're gonna to be doing variables. So we're gonna do variables, and then you can see with the learning target number two, we're gonna do a combination of numbers and variables. Now, some of you are probably thinking, oh crap, this is gonna be hard. Most people, just from speaking from experience here, think that the variables are actually easier than the numbers. So that might be good news for some of you. So recall from last lesson, when simplifying radicals, we looked for pairs of the same number, right? Under the radical. We're basically doing the same thing today, okay? Um, except this time it's variables. So a squared, what does that mean? Well, that's a times a. Well, we knew we can rewrite that back to basically where I started. The square root and the squared cancel and I'm left with just a or a to the first, so it means the same thing, okay? I put that second one there because of what happens. I want you to see what happens as we do all of these. a to the fourth, that's four a's, right? Multiply together. Well, if I split those apart strategically, I'm gonna put two of them together, and I'm gonna put another two of them together. Why? Well, then I've got a squared times a squared, the radical cancels and I'm left with A. The radical cancels and I'm left with another A. So A times A is A squared. So the square root of A to the fourth was A squared. How about A to the sixth? That's six A's, right? And again, be strategic. I wanna put two of them together and another two of them together and another two of them together. That's gonna make right? Six A's, right? But the square root and squared cancel, and I'm left with an A. Square root and square, squared cancel, I'm left with another A. Square root and squared cancel, I'm left with another A. What's A times A times A? A to the third. You might have noticed a pattern. A squared, square root of A squared became A to the first. Square root of A to the fourth became A squared. Square root of A to the sixth became a to the third. See if you can develop the pattern and try what's the square root of a to the 100th. You probably got it. It is this, it's a to the 50th. Okay. What is true about each of these examples? So these four examples, all of the exponents inside the radical are even. The exponents on the simplified version are not even, right? One and three are not even, but they're half of the exponents inside the radical, right? Half of two is one, half of four is two, half of six is three, half of 100 is 50. Super simple, right? Well, what happens when you have an odd number inside the radical? And that will happen, odd exponent inside the radical. Well, let's look at a to the third and see what happens. How many a's do we wanna to put together? Two of them, right? That leaves one, oops, there should be a multiply. At least one that doesn't have a, have a partner. So it's a squared with a leftover a. Radical and squared cancel, and I'm left with a with a leftover radical a. So it's a to the first, radical a to the first. Let's get a to the fifth. That's five a's. I'm gonna take two of them, put them together, take another two of them, put them together, and I'm gonna have one left over. So it's a squared, a squared, and a. Square root and squared cancel, that's an a. Square root and squared cancel, that's another a. A leftover a still inside the radical. a times a though is a squared, right? With a leftover a. So what's the difference between evens and odds? Well, the evens have nothing left over under the radical. The odds do. So they all have an, a leftover A, or in this, yeah, in this case, it's an A. Um, and then what about the outside number? That one can be a little tricky as well. So A to the 35th, I want you to give that one a shot. A lot of people are gonna say something like A to the 34th or A to the something left over A but it's not, it's a to the 17th radical a. 
So how did I get that? So, you know, how did I get a to the, this one was a radical a, this one was a squared radical a, this one was a 17 radical a. All of the simplified versions have one variable left over under the radical. They all do. Every time you have an odd, that's going to be the case. The exponent on the simplified version, so the one that I wrote, is half of the even number right before the exponent inside the radical. What do I mean by that? So the, the even number right before five is four. Half of four is two. So you gotta take half of the number right before. So half, the even number right before 35 is 34. Half of 34 is 17. That's where the outside exponent comes from. Then that one, left over goes back into the radical all right so let's go to the back bunch of practice problems first one is all variables and then everything oh yeah, not everything a lot of it afterwards is a combination of numbers and letters all right so what to do what I would do here is just break each of these up into their own radical and then put them back together at the end. You may remember from the first lesson I told you, we're gonna be doing a lot of breaking things apart and putting it back together. This is an example of that. I broke them apart into their own thing. And then once I'm done, I'm gonna put them all back together. So end of the sixth, six is even, that's easy. Half of six is three. That's it for the M's. N, that's an odd, nine is odd. Um, I will see a lot of people take the square to nine and say three. Keep in mind what you're doing here. It's not, it's not the number nine. That means it's there's nine ends. If I have nine ends, how many pairs can I make out of nine ends? Four, right? I can only make four pairs and there'd be one left over. The leftover one goes back underneath. Okay, P to the third. The no, even number right below three is two. Half of two is one. So P to the first or just P. And then there's a leftover P. And now I'm going to combine all the outside stuff. And by the way, this is outside. There's no radical. So it's outside the radical. I'm going to put all the outside stuff first. So M to the third, N to the fourth, P. And then I'll put all the inside stuff back together. N and P, it's just N, P. And that's it. You're done with that problem. Okay, number two. We are going to split it apart. I'm gonna highly recommend that you split it apart. So review of first lesson here, 27 is nine and three. Nine is three and three. That's a pair of threes. The leftover three, so three radical three. That one's done. I'd like to underline it when I'm done. Eight is an even number, that should be pretty easy. Half of eight is four. So outside stuff is three X to the fourth. Inside stuff is just a three. And that's done. Okay. Numbers three and four. This one adds a little bit of a wrinkle. There's stuff already on the outside. Don't be freaked out by that. Just move it over. We'll deal with that in a little bit. I always put parentheses there. And now I'm going to focus just on the radical. So that's a to the fifth and b squared. a to the fifth, odd. The number right before, the even number right before it is four. Half of four is two with a leftover a. Two is even, half of two is one, so that's just b. So that, if I put that together, I get a squared b on the outside of the radical with a leftover a. Now I just gotta put the outside stuff back together. So a squared, a squared, that makes a to the fourth. B times B makes B squared. And then the leftover is just radical A. If you go slow with this and you take it step by step, it's not hard. If you try and do it all in your head, you're gonna run into some trouble, okay? Number four, three X squared is already on the outside. I'm now just gonna focus on 54 and X to the seventh. 
54 is 9 and 6. 9 is 3 and 3. 6 is 3 and 2. That is a pair of 3s, which makes a 3 on the outside. 3 and 2 makes 6. 3 radical 6. X to the 7th, odd. The number right before it is 6. Half of 6 is 3 with a leftover X. So I'm going to take that. I'm not going to put it on the line. I'm going to, because I got this over here to remember. I'm going to take 3X to the third. Put it here. Uh, and 6X goes underneath the radical. And now last step, multiply those together. 3 times 3 is 9. X squared times X to the third is X to the fifth. Radical 6X. OK, number, number 5. And you know what? I'm going to, Scroll down a little bit. Everything inside the radical right now, okay? I see nothing on the outside, but there's a ton of stuff on the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that all together. 10 and five makes 50. G to the third times G to the first is G to the fourth. H to the fourth times H to the fifth is H to the ninth. So now I, when I put those together, I no longer need that. Now my new focus is the new radical. And I'm gonna split this into three different radicals, 50, G to the fourth, and H to the ninth. 50 is 10 and five. I'm gonna go a little quicker now since you should be getting more comfortable with this. That is a pair of fives and a leftover two. G to the fourth is even, that's nice g squared h to the ninth is odd the number right before it is eight half of eight is four left over h and now i just have to put it all back together outside stuff so five g squared h to the fourth radical two h that's done six looks confusing it's not shouldn't be at least I got some outside stuff that I want to put together, and then I got some inside stuff I want to put together. And I'm going to do that. 4z to the third times negative 2z, that's negative 8z to the fourth, right? Inside stuff, 21 times 3 is 63. z times z to the 10th is z to the 11th. Negative 8z to the fourth is already on the outside. I'm just going to push that over to the side, and now I'm just going to focus on 63 and z to the 11th. 63 is seven and nine. Nine is three and three. That's a pair of threes and a leftover seven. z to the 11th is odd. 11 is odd. Down to 10, half of 10 is five. And then one left over. I'm gonna take that and put it back in the parentheses. So three z to the fifth. Radical 7z. So negative 8 times 3 is negative 24. z to the 4th times z to the 5th is z to the ninth, And a leftover 7z. Okay? And that's variables. Along with a combination with numbers. Okay? Um, next lesson is going to be fractions.